I have sent a message. Okay, thank you. So, um, Peter, Peter, are you here? Good evening, everybody. Um, good morning and good evening, wherever we're joining from. I can see different faces. Uh, Roma, Forever, Pera, Dan, iPhone. I don't know who is iPhone. iPhone, can you can you tell us who you are? Dan, Dan, can you also inform the Cyprus region? Dan. Dan, can you drop a message to Cyprus region so they can know we've started? All right. Yeah, drop a message to their group. So they can mm -hmm. and, uh, um, uh, Pera, Pera, can you drop a message on the Telegram channel as well? Okay. So, yeah, then we can start. Our guest is here already. So, <laughs> yeah, we, we can see that um, all is set. So we can just go ahead. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Ah. Okay, who is iPhone? iPhone, can you put your real name? I with us with iPhone. <laughs> uh, Barista Smart. Yeah, good evening, everybody. Yeah, good evening, sir. Good evening. Good evening for me. Alpha. Boy. Yeah, I'm fine. I'm fine. Okay, um, a formal good evening, everybody. And um, it's, it's a, a privilege and pleasure to be here. And um, we are starting right away. Um, I'm going to give the stage to Smart. Smart, you take over from here. So you bring up the person for the opening prayer so we can start. Over to you, Smart. I guess Matt is having a network issue. So um, Peter, or Tom and Peter can. Peter. Okay. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Sorry okay. for that short break. Yeah. Right, I think. Um... Okay. Okay. Um, okay. Let's 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 have it this way. So um, I can see Smart is having some network issues, trying to reconnect. He's supposed to be the. An anchor. So before he comes up, um, a, a formal good evening to everybody. Thank you so much for showing up. And for those that are yet to come, um, I think we have 14 here now for those that are yet to come. Thank you so much for joining. This is this promises to be an amazing session. I'm so happy to see our beautiful faces. I wish we can have more people put on their videos so we can see our faces and appreciate the creation of God, right? Uh, as I'm seeing people like Pera and uh, in the Netherlands, people like Otobong, Peter, we have Oroma showing us her beautiful face. <laughs> so can we have more people put up their faces so we can appreciate the work of God, right? So thank you so much, everyone. Uh, we're going to have a time for introduction so we can get to know ourselves better, but we are going to start with an opening prayer. And um, Dan is the person that will take us for the opening prayer. So, Dan, are you here now? Yes, sir, I am. Okay, over to you, brother. Good evening, good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for being here. I count it as a great opportunity for me to take this session. I just want us for a short moment, let's Thank God, let's appreciate him for 
again another opportunity to gather together again another privilege to be alive today again another privilege to spend time together i just want you to bless him thank him for a short moment father we thank you we bless you we say thank you jesus thank you father for the for your grace we bless your holy name we exalt you jesus thank you for your love thank you for everything you're doing in our lives we bless you father for the grace to be alive today the grace to be together today the grace to gather the grace lord to spend time learning the grace to spend time to get to know more get to learn lord thank you father for everything you're doing we bless you father we are grateful we don't take it for granted we don't take it as a habit to wake up every day we don't take it as something usual we know it's a grace from you that's why we thank you we bless you i just want you to ask the spirit of god to speak to you today through our guest speaker or through anyone that will speak i just want you to ask the spirit of the lord to speak to your hearts to teach you something it may not be something big it may not be something so deep but just ask the spirit of the lord to change one thing in you to change at least one thing in you through the word that will be said today father lord a spirit of god we pray in the name of jesus that you may speak to our hearts that you may lead us lord everything that will be done today father we pray in the name of jesus that it will be your spirit that your spirit will take over that your spirit will lead us that your spirit will guide us lord in jesus name we have prayed father we thank you Amen. we bless you for everything we celebrate your name father we recommend everything into your hands from the beginning of this session to the end that may you and only you be glorified father we pray that every speaker we speak of your mind every speaker we speak to every person of us of your mind father we pray in the name of jesus that you and you be glorified for in jesus name we have prayed amen thank you so much Hey, thank you so much. Thank you. Okay, thank you for that beautiful session of prayer. Um, Peter, um, over to Peter now for opening the back. Peter, are you there? Okay. Hello, can you hear me? I'm audible. Yes, we can hear you now. We can hear you. All right. Good evening, everyone. All right. Good evening, everyone. Good evening um, to all those joining in and to all members of the 360 um, family. It's really been um, an amazing journey since our last um, major meeting last year. And to also see that now we've been able to you know, have the opportunity to actually connect. Um, it's been amazing because on one end, we have um, people who are very passionate about leadership and then on the other end because we also have people who are also very um, passionate about adding value in their space and um, individually right for those of us I'm really um, close to I've really been seeing a piece of growth and it's been really um, amazing so the entire journey of what we've been doing literally really started with this um, um, strong value uh, the drive to particularly understand that um, there's so much about leadership and leadership right is not just about position about having offices right it's about service first and when you decide that you want to be a leader and that you want to serve one of the most important things is understanding your strengths and then looking at your space and then figuring out exactly what ways you feel you'd be able to make some sort of contributions and that's where we are with different persons, you know, who have different strengths across different spheres from technology to um, law and all that, you know, it's been really amazing. And, that is, and um, you know, having amazing persons here, I think um, every day it's a strong reminder that each day we are driving closely towards that um, strong 
um, vision and goal of finding ways to, you know, really um, add value when it comes to the leadership space. So um, just going to give a bit of a rundown of how last year's was and then um, what the event, what we should expect. And then I'm going to just leave the floor for um, the next um, members of the 360 family to just give their shot, um, you know, um, to just take on a short and brief session. So last year was more about in-house development where we had um, book reviews, you know, we had events and then coupled with our Unmute Yourself series. So it was about the opportunity of allowing us grow, um, learning that um, reading is very important and also understanding that um, beyond yourself, right, having strong network and um, connecting with people is very um, great. So I think those in Cyprus met. And then for those of us in Nigeria, I was able to connect with those of us in Port Harcourt. So it was really great because like understanding that networks are very important and um, people are very important in pushing agenda. That's what most of our um, work last year was all about. So this year is gonna be about more of expanding and building um, a strong network and a community of people. The goal for this is gonna be about community. And today's session is really gonna be an amazing session. I think uh, I would be able to do the introduction better than Komi. So when um, Komi comes up, he's going to be able to introduce our speaker for today. He's an amazing person. He's someone that is worth listening to us, a vast experience in leadership. And our goal is that by listening to him today, right, that there's gonna be so much that we're going to be able to learn as regard leadership, as regard 36 leadership network. And then it's really gonna help us pro, um, prepare for this year as we uh, you know, um, invest deeply in community. So um, without much ado, I'll just um, remind us once again, right? For 36 Leadership Network, our major goal is to create, shape, and raise a generation of well-rounded leaders. And that goes beyond just um, the talk of leadership itself, right? It goes about um, the talk on the workplace. It, talks, it, um, it goes towards faith. It talks about culture, literally every single area that would help us to build well-rounded leaders. And that's what um, informs the M36 Leadership Network. So once again, welcome. And, I, and today's session is really going to be an amazing opportunity to learn as we retool to refire. All right, thank you very much. So for the next sessions, we have um, Paris Barango and Loretta in line just to just give us a very short talk on um, some really amazing topic, which we feel is also going to just prepare us um, in lieu of today's talk. So. I would yield the mic at this point. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much. Um, Oti, that was a powerful speech and you forgot to tell, to, to tell us that you are the deputy team leader. So those that are joining us for the first time, you can also know um, the person that you are. Thank you for the amazing work you do and for the person that you are. You, you represent a lot of light and um, you're very passionate about all that you, you, you find yourself in and you're really someone that have taught us so much and we are proud to have you in this organization. Thank yeah, you. Thank so you, Kumi. Thank you. And um, tonight we have so much, so much more. I said tonight because it's night here in, in, the, U, in the UK. We have so much to learn from our speaker. Um, he, he gave me just a voice note telling me about himself. And that alone was a full session of for, it was a full session for me, because just through the voice note I was able to connect with him and and he, it was just like a teaching. On this, on, <laughs> I know what I'm saying, and I'm sure we, we have a lot to learn. We've had a lot of speakers come in house like this to teach us, not to the larger community, because this is just an in house meeting. We didn't open it out too much for for so many other persons. So. We've had people come in to teach us, and um, we've, 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 but I tell you, this is going to be an amazing session. I've told you guys a lot about him and, and all that, but I tell you, this is going to be an amazing session. You don't want to miss for anything. And um, so before our speaker comes up, we have a few of the team leaders, team members that will be sharing just two minutes of talk on leadership, service, and purpose. So before we bring up our speaker, so um, who is the first person? I think uh, we have um, Oroma, Loretta, right? Right. Tommy, I think it's Oroma. 
Oh, oral. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, my brother. I didn't get. Okay, can we hear you? Oral. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you now. Go ahead. On. Yes, your 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 voice is kind of down. Do you have something attached to your audio or something? We still can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Better, better now, better. Awesome. Okay, so I think I'm finding it difficult to hear everyone. We can hear you. Okay. So um, I was asked that we, should, we, we could talk about leadership, team building, or service. So I just combine all of them in one. So I don't think I can hear everyone, but I'll try. I'll try. Since you can hear me, I think that's fine. So I was asked, we are going to stop talking about leadership, team building, and service. So I combined all of them in one. I, I so, think you should introduce yourself before you start. Okay, you know. okay, yes. I can hear you now, yes. Okay, so I'm Loretta Oroma Aleko. I'm by the special grace of God. I'm the regional head for TCC Leadership Network in Nigeria. Mm -hmm. Yes, so we're asked to talk about um, leadership, team building, and service. So I just somehow compressed all in one and i was going to also address the need of you know availing ourselves to learning and trying to erase the arrival mentality because you know in learning there are some persons who learn faster than the others and by that you know sort of begin to feel superior than the others, probably through, um, through experience, you know, through um, connections, you get to meet people still in the same learning space where we, we find yourself. Some, sometimes we see ourselves, although we are all leaders, but there are some persons who are more experienced or have gone further than we are, have. So there is always a need to, you know, check ourselves to make sure that we do not have the arrival mentality because the moment you begin to have that arrival mentality, that's the, the moment you begin to fail because regardless, there are always people ahead of you. So you must always be open to learning, always be open to learning, regardless of how far you've gone or how well you know. And also talking about service, you need for humility in service, it's very, very important. Because, you know, I, I wrote something here that we, we, should, we ought to respect people because first, they are humans. You respect people because they are human beings just as you are first. Regardless of status, regardless of anything, you know, in leadership, we have to understand the need to respect everyone. There are some persons who are leaders who feel like they are respecting a person because the person is superior to them or because they have something that they can achieve or benefit from that person, which is very erroneous and wrong. Because we do not see, because we do not see something that we should benefit from someone doesn't mean that we should disrespect them or see them as nothing. Probably we have not just realized or you know, seen that thing that we can learn from someone. So by way of concluding, because I think I'm already, um, <laughs> my two minutes is already coming to an end. So by way of concluding, we ought to respect everyone, regardless of what we think or feel about them. Respect is key. You don't respect people because of what you stand to gain from them, but because first they are human beings just like you are. And also leadership, we ought to remove the whole arrival mentality because the moment we start seeing ourselves as being arrived or being at the top there, that's the beginning of our downfall. We begin to nose dive in our 
career. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that was beautiful. That was beautiful. Hand of applause for her. Thank you so much for that wonderful talk. I, I learned a lot from that. Um, we shouldn't have an arrival mentality. We should still be ready to learn from people and not come to people because of what you want to gain, right? But, but just what you can contribute and also learn yes. as well. Yes, yeah. because, because, because when we begin to you know, gain exposure, when we begin to meet people because yeah. of the little knowledge that we begin to, um, we, are, we already have in, you get exactly. to understand that if we do not check ourselves, unconsciously yeah. sometimes we feel like a normal it's a normal thing but unconsciously that pride that arrival mm -hmm. mentality begins to step in we may not even see it especially when you're not the type that always check yourself yeah. you know self-assessment you may not even know that that's where you are headed to so exactly. there's also a need for self you know like always checking yourself self-assessment very important thank you so much that was brilliant thank you thank you thank you um, I think we have someone else, um, the second person to take the next session. Uh, who, who, who was that, Peter? Was it Barango? It okay, should Barango. be uh, Mr. Pariso, yeah. Yeah, Pawariso. Pawariso, can we have you on, please? Thank you. Pawariso, are you there? I don't know if it's um if he's free now, right? So okay, okay, all right, awesome. Okay. Okay, can you unmute yourself, sir? I think he just sent a message that he's available. We can't so hear you. Like he actually sent me a message that he was. That he was yes. in transit, so I want to be sure if he's uh, available now to give the talk. Oh, I see. I see. Yes. Okay. Good evening, everyone. All yeah, right. Good, good evening. evening. All right. Um, thank you very much for the privilege to speak today. I'm actually on transit, so I may not um, um, start my video. Please, may I okay. be pardoned? Okay. So I have just two minutes and I want to see how I can maximize the time, okay? I will be talking on service, very briefly on service, just like our sister Loretta said, she's uh, made some very, very vital points. Humility is required for you to be a great servant, for you to serve greatly, okay? But I want to come from this uh, other perspective um, that service is what leadership is all about. Service is what leadership is all about. We have, a lot of us have several definitions of leadership. One of our, our very mentor on leadership says that leadership is influence, nothing more, nothing less. And I believe that so much because um, under, under it, what we have is service. Service is one of the ways, the fastest ways to influence people through and genuine service. It's one of the ways to influence people. So I believe service, is what leadership is all about. Secondly, I want to say that to become a great leader, you must first of all strive to become a great servant. To become a great leader, we all must strive to become great servants. According to Jim George, he said something. Jim George said, serving others prepares you to lead others. Serving others prepares you to lead others. Okay, a lot of persons want to lead, but they don't want to serve. This statement is also true, just like people saying they want to go to heaven, but they don't want to die, right? A lot of people want to go to heaven, they want to inherit the kingdom of God, but they don't want to die, and they don't want to do the things that will, that will enable them to inherit the kingdom of God. So that's how it is for service. If you're not willing to serve, you can never be a great leader. All the great leaders that we have in history, you can, if you check their history, you can trace them to, the, you can trace their results, okay, the, the key to their results to being service. They served. So, um, as we prepare to lead others, we should keep the following in mind. Three things I want to say before I conclude. Number one, the life of a true leader 
does not belong to him. It belongs to all who need him desperately. So let's keep that in mind as we prepare to lead others. Our life, as we step out into leadership, we should know that it does not belong to us. It belongs to, to those who desperately need us. There are several people that we, we may be sent to. Some need us desperately. Some do not need us desperately. But when you are able to um, perceive those that need you desperately as a leader, you should know that your life is to be invested upon those people. Secondly, what we do for ourselves dies. It dies with us. But what we do for others and the world remains and is immortal. What we do for ourselves dies with us. But what we do for others and the world around us, that's what remains and is immortal. And then finally, I want to say that the best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in service to others. That's what Mahatma Gandhi said. And it's a very powerful quote I will never forget in a hurry. The best way to find yourself. Now, relating this to purpose, right? So if you want to find your purpose, find a way to serve others. You realize who you truly are. Okay, so um, finally, friends, if we are determined to lead, let us be committed to serve. If we are determined to lead from now going forward, let us also be committed to service because that's one of the keys to true leaders, true success in leadership. Thank you very much and God bless you all. Wow, that was amazing. That was amazing. Thank you so much. I think one, one characteristic of leaders. It was really amazing. It was, it was, it was like, like too much point in, 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 in a single um, dose. I'm telling you, I'm telling yeah. you. I think one, one characteristic of leaders is the ability to appreciate. So when you see someone doing something amazing or someone said something that was so profound, you should have the ability to appreciate. So can we just put our hands yeah. together for him? And we just appreciate. Thank you so much, uh, yeah. Power. So, and let's he said something. I let's also appreciate. The don't Roma know if, if, if I can add something. To what he yeah, said, yeah, sure. You could. You could. Let's let's appreciate the Roma. Let's just appreciate her as well. Thank you so much for the amazing um, points you both of you just gave. Now we we learned a lot from it, and um, thank you so much, Peter. You said you wanted to add something. Yeah, I was just saying that that was a very profound talk, and then he said something about you know. That's that in um, losing ourselves, right? Like in losing ourselves for as we find ourselves. And then he just took me back to this scripture about um, the first miracle of Jesus was just about uh, that. He said, you know, um, fill the jars with water. In serving the jars of water, they became wine. They didn't become wine when they were in the jar. They became wine when they were served. Mm -hmm. So when we serve ourselves, right? The wine mm -hmm. that we actually are, who we really are, that's when the miracle happens. It doesn't happen in the jar. It happens when we lose ourselves out. So thank you so much, Barango. That was awesome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Amazing, amazing. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, I think um, now we are going to really go into what we have today. I know everybody's ready, your pen, your paper, your bio, you're ready to write, you're ready to receive. And most importantly, we are ready to be impacted. Yeah, to be impacted and, and to receive the grace we need to run the race for this year as 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 team members and also as individuals, please, I would like us to put on our cameras for those, if, if you can, and it's possible for you, please do turn on your camera as a sign of commitment so we can all come together to learn. And um, we have a guest that has come all the way from mm -hmm. the other side of the world, the Bahamas, <laughs> to be with us today. We are really, really privileged and honored to have him out of his very busy schedule and all that he's engaged in, he has decided to be here with us. And we are really grateful, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you. I want your ears to be open. I want your spirit to be open because he's not just a speaker, but he's also a very spiritual person. And uh, <laughs> he has a way of connecting with us. I told you about just the voice note he sent to me and how I was able to tell so much and, and really connect to him just via a voice note just via a voice note to tell you how powerful that is. So here we have people from, I wish everybody can just do a rough introduction of themselves so he can know us personally. I think that would be nice. Okay, so let's start from Pera. Pera, just introduce yourself. Tell us what you do, where you are, and just what you're passionate about so he can really have a grasp of 
of, of all of us, then we can bring him up. Okay, as fast as possible, everybody. Yeah, Pera. Hi, uh, my name is Pera. Um, I'm the Human Resources Officer at 360 Leadership Network. Um, I'm currently studying international relations. I'm interested in yeah, socioeconomic development, especially in the area of food security. Okay, where are you from and where are you? <laughs> uh, I'm from Zimbabwe, I'm in the Netherlands. Okay, yeah. So let's move to the next person. Uh, uh, okay, um, Loretta, you can go. Okay, so good evening, everyone. I'm Loretta Oroma, as you call, and I am Nigerian. I'm from Nigeria, a graduate at law, and I'm the regional head, Nigeria 360 Leadership Network. And of course, I'm interested in leadership and seeing people grow and evolve to who they really are. And you know, by that, fulfilling purpose and assignments. Amazing, amazing. Thank and I'll so be much. giving the microphone to Smart. Smart. Thank you, microphone. thank you. You know the right thing to do, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, good evening, everybody. Um, my name is Smart, Smart of uh, I'm a lawyer. Um, I work out of the city of Patakot uh, in Nigeria. Um, I practice with the law firm of Alitwan Uh My practice areas are district resolution, fintech, and international trade. Um, as a person, I'm passionate about um, helping young people discover themselves and basically um, inspiring people to take responsibility for whatever sphere of influence they find themselves by making positive impact. So yeah, in 30 seconds, that's um, more like a brief of, of myself. Um, and part of, I'm glad to be part of the P60 Leadership Network. Uh, I've been part of this network for uh, as long as I can remember. So thank you very much. <laughs> thank you so much. Okay, you can pass the mic to somebody, if you don't mind. Okay, I will pass the mic to Barango. Okay. Barango, over to you. I believe he's still in transit, so someone else can, can take from him. Okay. Okay, can't speak now. Okay, let's, let's move to the route. Route, over to you. I was just about to say it now, sir. Ah, the spirit is one now. <laughs> good evening, everybody. I hope you can hear me. Yes, we can. Yeah, good evening, everybody. My name is Ruth Mahoro. I'm from Rwanda and I'm currently in Cyprus and I'm studying general psychology. I'm mostly interested in um, leadership and then equipping. Okay, psychology is another fact because it's mostly human brain and everything, but um, I'm interested in leadership and equipping young people before they reach to that, uh, let's say what they say, like um, president, ministers, but equipping them at a young age and then start preparing them to what they are going to be doing in the future. Thank you very much. Oh, thank you. Amazing. So who are you passing the mic to? I guess um, I'm passing the mic to Peter Otobon. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Okay, Peter. Hello, everyone. My name is uh, Otobon Peter, calling from um, Nigeria, Abuja, to be precise. So I am also equally, I'm very passionate about um, leadership and um, people and um, technology. So it just um, circles around that. And uh, so it's, um, that's basically, and then I currently um, deputy team lead at um, 360 Leadership Network and I also lead on the content and so thank you. Thank you, bro. So who are you passing the mic to? Okay, I'll pass the mic to Fumi. Okay. Fumi, over to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can see you. 
Hi everyone. My name is Tommy. I'm from Nigeria and I'm presently in India studying nothing. Okay. So what are you passionate about, Fumi? <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm more passionate about learning, growing spiritually and in every area of my life. Helping people. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you for sharing. Okay, so why are you passing the mic to Fumi? Okay, I'm going to pass the microphone to you. <laughs> to me? Yes. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> okay, it's the matter of which is, you said it so calmly. Okay, so it's, it's on me now. Okay. Uh, greetings, okay. everybody. My name is Komi Marvin, and um, I'm the team lead for 360 Leadership Network. And uh, I'm, I'm Nigerian but I'm presently in the UK, the United Kingdom, and um, I'm passionate about leadership. I think it's very obvious. <laughs> yeah, leadership, personal development, and that is what drives me every day. And that's what has led me to everything I do. And I'm, I'm very, very happy and privileged to be here. So thank you so much. Thank you. So I'm going to pass the mic to Dan, Dan Mpinda. Okay. Good evening, everyone. I hope you guys can hear me. Yeah. Yeah, we can hear you. All right. Uh, my name is Dan Mbinda. I am uh, from Congo, Congolese, currently living in Cyprus, where I'm studying computer engineering. Um, what am I passionate about? I'm passionate about a lot of things. But in concerning leadership, I could say it's um, that desire inside of me to help people change their conception about certain things that I see as wrong, that I don't think is right, that affects people's mentality today, and also take them to the right path. And yeah, basically, let me stop there before I explain <laughs> how. Yeah. Thank All you right, so it. thank you. Why, why are you passing it to? Who am I going to pass it to? Uh, I'll pass the mic to... I see Mervyn in the house. Yes. She'll oh, keep okay. me after this, I know, but... <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, Mervyn. Thank you so much. Good evening, everybody. I, I can be heard, yeah? Yeah, we can hear you. Okay, so my name is Mervyn. I'm Congolese. I am a computer engineer student. I'm currently living in Cyprus. I am passionate about tech, technology in general. This is my course of study, but I think one of the reasons that drives me and one of the reasons I wake up every morning is I am passionate and about personal development and I believe in people. And what I mean um, by that is that I believe that with the correct or with the right resources, everybody is capable of great things. And Amazing. the reason why I live and I believe that's why, that's what is really driving me is to find a way to teach them and to give them those resources and just see them become the amazing person they should be so amazing awesome awesome thank you so much i think we're, we're connected with that greatly okay is there anyone else that have not spoken i think we have eliel eliel let's hear from eliel and i think that we, with that we are almost wrapping up eliel okay um good evening everyone good evening okay my name is eliel sincerely and me also, I'm a Congolese from DRC, currently in Cyprus, studying architecture. So I'm passionate about architecture, especially vernacular architecture and sustainability. That's my passion. <laughs> yeah, and something else, I'm very passionate about leadership. Leadership, because 
I don't want to learn architecture only for myself. I want to transmit this knowledge to future generations. Yeah, that's me. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, thank you, Elliot. Who else have not spoken? Success. We have success and we have Pawariso. Please, can we be just very fast so we can bring up our speaker shortly? Success, can we hear from you? Pawariso, can we hear from you? Thank you. All right, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Uh, um, first of all, I just want to apologize for uh, not turning on my video based on the location I'm in now, currently now. Um, my name is Success and um, I'm a Nigerian. I'm studying pharmacy here in Cyprus. And um, some of the things I'm passionate about first is about um, spiritual growth. Uh, and another thing is about health and the welfare, the well-being of human. And one other thing I'm also passionate about is helping people build values because um, I've seen so many people with so much gift or so much talent um, having the idea of purpose but lack value. So that is one of the things I want to build on or inculcate in the young ones and even the youth and also learn more of those values. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you. That was short and precise. Um, can we can we just get to our power issue? Please, let's try to be very fast so we can bring up our speaker. Okay, good evening, everyone, once again. Good evening. Good evening. All right, my, my name is Pawariso Barango. Um, I'm a Nigerian, a graduate of electrical engineering from River State University. I have strong interest for Christian discipleship, leadership, and youth development. I believe that my life's um, purpose is to see lives truly transformed, especially teenagers and youths. So that is, that is it. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you, thank you. That was wonderful, thank you. Uh, who else have not spoken at Oreva? Oreva John, can we hear from you? And then um, we have Aminat Sese. Oreva John, can we hear? Wherever John, if he was here, I don't know if he's here. Okay. Good, e good evening, sir. Can you yes, hear me? Please. We can hear you. Okay. My name is Wherever John, and I'm from Nigeria, calling from Rakot. I'm a graduate of uh, River City University, Marine Engineering. I am passionate about uh, personal development, leadership, uh, business development, nation building. Those are just the areas I put out my discussions on, online. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you so much. It's one of the, the faces behind our media, our media house. Thank you for all the amazing work you do forever. Thank you. Okay, uh, who else have we not heard from? Um, Aminat Sese, can we hear from you, your name and what you're passionate about? Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. My name is Aminat Sese. And I'm currently in Cyprus, I'm from Sierra Leone. And I'm passionate about spiritual growth and learning new things. Yes, I think that's it, thank you. Thank you so much, Amina, thank you, thank you, thank you. Awesome. Okay. Yeah, I think everybody have spoken. Um, who else? Um, Gabriel, Gabriel, are you around? And iPhone, I don't know who is iPhone. Is someone's name iPhone? Is there a country that says <laughs> iPhone? And I don't know. <laughs> okay, Gabriel, let's hear from Gabriel. Uh, okay, can we hear me? Perfectly. Uh, my name is Gabriel Tolua Lashe Oloron Toba. Okay. Okay, the name is long, right? I'm a Nigerian. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> okay, I'm an estate surveyor and valuer, just a realtor. And then I'm passionate about God first, okay. passionate about leadership, mm -hmm. and I'm passionate about academics. I'm passionate about um, teaching and 
growing people. Let's just summarize it that way, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. That was amazing. Okay. Um, iPhone, I don't know if iPhone is around. iPhone is around. <laughs> I think that's Vincent. Vincent. <laughs> Should that be I Vincent? I think the iPhone is Vincent. No, Vincent came in with his name. I saw when he came in with his name. I think iPhone should maybe someone else. I am phone. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Thank you so much, everybody, for sharing your story. And um, all, the, all those things you were telling us that is your passion. It's, it's just a bit of your story. And what have formed the person you are up to the point you are right now. And we appreciate your story. Thank you for sharing with us. And um, thank you for also being a part of this community, especially as a core team, because those we have here, uh, many of which are the core team of this organization, we are grateful for the work you do. And this is um, just a summit for us to learn and also to share. We have a great speaker with us here today just to help us through that journey. And we are very privileged to have him out of his busy schedule. I want you to really pay attention it was times like this that has shaped our lives and has made us the persons that we are today. And um, I must say it's a big privilege to be here today. Big, big privilege. Thank you so much um, for being with us. And um, I'm going to introduce the speaker in a bit. Pera, Pera, are you ready to do that? It's okay, I can do that. Okay, so Pera is going to read the the, the bio of our speaker, and then I'll do my own introduction and um, we'll have him. Okay, over to you, Pera. All right, uh, we're very privileged to have you with us, uh, Mr. Sharman Munro. Uh, Mr. Sharman Munro uh, is known for inspiring you to inspire the world. This encapsulates the reason why he was born. Um, he's driven by being purpose-filled. Um, he has a passion and a vision. Um, to, yeah, to help others in order to inspire, to inspire others. And he's known as Mr. Motivator. Mr. Monroe provides a message of hope that allows him to venture into the motivational arena. He's a youth advisor on the youth advisory board to the Minister of Youth, uh, Sports and Culture in the Bahamas, where he's going to speak from us, to us from. He's also um, uh, speaking to local and international bodies of leaders and civic leaders on emerging leadership matters namely uh, the focus group called Millennial. He's a conference speaker and also facilitator to local schools and other social empowerment initiatives. And he's also a certified youth leader from the Ministry of Youth Sports and Culture in the Bahamas. So yeah, we're gonna learn a lot. Okay, thank you so much. And um, I'm, I'm sure um, we, we are ready for what we, we have tonight. Thank you so much, sir, for the privilege of being with us today is an amazing speaker and what many many people may know or may not know is that he's also uh, a cousin to uh, Dr. Miles Monroe for those I'm sure everybody knows Miles Monroe if you're in the leadership space and I'm also a cousin to him as well and it's a real privilege to have him here and um, this this is the first for him to address the, the team and then we'll have the one for the larger community where we have on our social media platforms to go project it there. But we really want him to fuse in us for the time of course that we have now. So I'm going to leave the stage for him now, but I want you to really, really pay attention and um, as we learn from him. So with a rowdy welcome, let's put our hands together as we bring on stage Shamron Monroe. Amen. Ah. Hi, everybody. I am Shamron Monroe from the Bahamas, the place of paradise. And of course, as uh, my late uncle, Dr. Miles Monroe would always say, the place where God lives. And of course, I've traveled to Nigeria. I've been to Beni City. I've been to Lekki. Uh, came into Lagos in 2019. I was there. And I was also down in Kenya in 2018, where I was in Nairobi, Kenya. Uh, was my first time when I went to Africa, it was in 2018 to Kenya. Uh, it was an amazing experience. And uh, all of you today, you are an amazing group of people. Thank you so much, Mark. 
Marvin Kuma for allowing me to 365, correct? This 365 leadership team, leadership 360. network. 360, 360, 360, okay, 360 Leadership Network. Uh, thank you so much, Pierre, for the introductory. Uh, I'm excited. Uh, one of the other things that is a part of what we do, uh, the organization that you might see on my screen here is called I'm International. And I'm International is uh, an acronym for inspiration and motivation. And our focus here uh, is based on education, uh, training, and development. And one of the things that we focus on is educational support services. And those educational support services has a lot to do with tutoring, teaching, training, empowering. And you've heard my bio where I talked about we go into the school system. So we go into the educational system and really uh, reach young people. And now I am actually 37 years old. And uh, I've been doing this from I was 17 years old. So that gives you an idea how long I've been trotting, how long I've been really motivating people traveling throughout the United States, uh, throughout the Caribbean, and of course, right here in the Bahamas. Uh, I'm originally from the island of Exuma. It's called Great Exuma, but now I am stationed in the island of New Province called the city Nassau. And so that's the capital city here within the Bahamas, the Commonwealth of the Bahamas. Of course, I'm also a, a minister uh, preaching and teaching the kingdom message throughout the world. And of course, uh, Kuma told me that he found me on Facebook. And to be honest, I'm excited. I'm excited because you guys are excited. I mean, some of you are from places that I've been, so I'm excited. Cyprus. Wow. I can't wait. to. I got to come there soon, 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 <laughs> soon. You know, you're from the Netherlands. And of course, majority of you are from Nigeria, which of course, I, I, I enjoyed it when I was there. And um, now Lagos was pretty big when I was there. So I was like, wow, this is a big place. Uh, I, I love, I don't know. I want to say I love Kenya. Kenya is pretty nice. I love Kenya. But hey, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't been to all of Africa yet. So I, I have to get there and as the Lord will lead. So we are going to get into it. We're talking about leadership, we're talking about purpose, leadership, and service. So I want to get into this and for the for the for the for the context, to build the context of why we're talking about purpose leadership and service, I want to actually go to the book of Acts, the book of Acts, all right, you don't have to turn there, the book of Acts chapter one, in the first chapter there, the book of Acts actually explains a little bit after the apostles, the leaders there, uh, who followed Jesus Christ, the, 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 the rabbi, the Jewish rabbi, the leader of a group of young individuals, motivating them to a higher calling, he said to them after he left, and, uh, uh, um, and after he left, he told them to go into a place and be filled with the power, okay? The spirit of leadership, I'm gonna talk about that. And he also mentioned to them that uh, when they were choosing the people, they began to sit down, Peter, James, and John, and all of those, they began to sit down, and they wanted to fulfill a position, a very important position, and it was the position of the place of Judas. They said, we want apostle, and the position of Judas, and it was, uh, uh, it was another gentleman, um, Matthias, and it was another uh, Joseph, uh, these guys were now, they were chosen, and the Bible says, the text says, and the lot fell on Matthias. The lot fell on Matthias, and Matthias became the 12th apostle, adding to the fact that jo Judas was out of bound. Judas, we know, had betrayed Jesus and also committed suicide, okay? Now, in that text, it's very powerful to understand. They, when they chose the apostle, then they chose that individual, they set some criteria. The criteria was that the individual would have been someone who had been following the ministry and the organization of Yeshua for the beginning of the time that they started. So the three years that Jesus would have been uh, 
into his uh, messianic kingdom ministry uh, 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 throughout the land of, of Judea and Syria and, and, and Syria and And uh, 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 this individual would have been someone who would have traveled with them. That's the first thing. Very, very important. And then the second aspect is that the individual must have been filled with the Holy Spirit. Very important again. And we're going to talk about that. That's the spirit of leadership. And then the last one is that the individual must be someone who is teachable. And you all have said that so many times in your, your little speeches. You said briefly that if you're going to serve, you must be humble, you must be teachable. And so I want to uh, dissect and, 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 and pull away from this particular narrative on our topic today about purpose, leadership, and service. I want you to understand that if you're going to serve, you first must understand your leadership potential. So service, leadership, and then if you're gonna be a leader, you must know your purpose. So purpose is first. So let's start out with purpose. When we discuss purpose, ladies and gentlemen, we talk about how purpose is the reason why something or someone exists. Now that is very important. Because if you're serving or leading and don't understand the reason why you exist, you will be leading people and serving people in the wrong situation. It means you will be leading people to nowhere and you will be serving out of nothing. Because service comes from something and leadership goes somewhere. Let's say that again service comes out of something and leadership goes somewhere. So if you don't know who you are, this is the first thing you should understand. You have disqualified yourself from leadership. Now, I want you to understand, don't be so hard on yourself. Everybody will discover their purpose somehow or another. But service, watch this, service reflects a, a minute revelation of your purpose. Service is not entirely how you will discover yourself because why? You are a subtotal of everything, of your background, where you came from, your ethnicity, your family life and faith. You are a subtotal of all of that, your experience and your journey in life that makes you an outstanding leader. So you cannot just look at the service you do and say, hey, this is what I'm called to do. Service is a hint. It is a, it is a, 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 a sidebar of who you are. It's not all of it, but it's some of it. Because why? When I was about 17 years old, I did a lot of painting as an artist. I'm an artist as well. And so I did a lot of painting. I would paint a lot. I would draw and I would just do wonderful paintings. And as I got older, I, I write songs and used to rap. So I went from painting to rapping, writing music. And then as I got older, to, in my 20s, I started to teach and to speak. And so I, I, I morphed into a dynamic uh, individual from painting to singing, rapping into a speaker. Now, ultimately, I knew I had the gift of speaking, but I never saw myself as a speaker. I was never really a speaker when I was younger, even though I was not shy, okay? I was never shy. I was ultimately the person that people would call on to lead assembly in school and, and give speeches every now and then and to talk about uh, my faith. But I was not necessarily a public speaker. That came along as I grew. So I grew into the gift of the individual that you see today. And then that became all that I am right now, <laughs> okay? But I've done several other things. I am, I've done a school, I've been a school teacher for a year. I was a second grade teacher. 
where I taught classical school at a classical school, second grade. Um, so I've served in that capacity. And then as a youth leader uh, within my country, I served the government and I still do, and also serve in other capacities during youth events when I served as the youth pastor of Bahamas Faith Ministries International. That's the, found, the organization that was founded by the late Dr. Miles Monroe. So I served in those capacities. I led in those capacities, but I didn't start in that place. So service can change throughout your age and service can change throughout your stage of life. Why? Because there are some passions you had when you were younger that you no longer have as you get older. So even though these terminologies are used interchangeable in regards to purpose, we must clearly understand that they are not the only ingredients that leads us to discovering our purpose, but they are the subtotal. They are all gathered together that makes up who we are and allows us to discover our individual purpose. So because there are, a lot of, there are a lot of people who are speakers, but they're not people who are speakers who are an artist or a rapper. There might be a lot of rappers, but then not a lot of rappers who are an artist and a speaker. So do you understand? So let's go now to purpose. Let's write the word purpose out. And we're gonna give it, I'm gonna give you guys an acronym. The word purpose simply is the reason for existing. The reason for existing. Now, when you understand that, that purpose is the reason for existing, then the question, therefore, is what do I exist for? Well, your existing is determined by the creator, okay? Because everything that is created was created by a creator. And the purpose of the creation Wow. Yeah, I, th I think there's network issues. Um, let's wait for him to reconnect. Churn is wrapped up in the idea and the mind of the creator. That's okay, something yes, went we for a moment. Yes, we can hear you now. Okay, so purpose is the reason why you exist. Purpose is the reason why you come into being. So when we write the word purpose out, I'm gonna give you the acronym because the acronym is going to explain exactly what causes you to now discover who you are. So the letter P, purpose. When you think about purpose, you must think about something that is productive something that is productive. So when you look at what you are productive in or you're productive with, that is an indication of your purpose. What are you productive in doing, okay? What do you find yourself doing that is so productive, it produces a level of excellence. It produces a level of, and this is the next word in purpose, P-U, you know, uniqueness. So purpose is not only productive, but it is unique. It causes you to stand out. It causes you to come alive. It causes you to arise to a place of prominence, a place where everyone gets to see you at the top. See, an eagle is different than every bird. And the, the design of the eagle does, determines its uniqueness. And the uniqueness of the bird and its design 
allows everyone to conclude at the end of the day that this is the leader or the apex of birds. This is so like you. You are unique and your uniqueness causes you to reveal your productivity. So you are productive, you are unique, and the next aspect of purpose is the R, real. Everybody write down the word real. Now, I explained it this way because real means it's not fake. Real means it's not fake. So anything that causes you to be fake or not really who you are, it's not your purpose because your purpose is designed for you to be real. Your purpose is designed for you to express your uniqueness. And your purpose is designed to make you productive. Oh, I hope you're getting this. I hope you're getting this. So you want to know what's my purpose? What's my purpose? I'm telling you, you got to be productive with it. It makes you unique and it's real. I want everybody to touch yourself a moment. Just pinch yourself, pinch yourself. I hope you say, ouch. <laughs> because that means you're real. Yeah. Touch you. It's real. It's authentic. It's alive. It's here. So one of the things about purpose, because it's so real, the realness of your purpose allows you to be present. You notice I've never said your purpose is your degree. I never said your purpose is your job. I never said your purpose is what you do in your career field. I never said that. Why? Because those things are only avenues. They are platforms of your demonstrating your leadership. Those platforms and avenues are only the uniqueness where you find yourself so you can dominate and you can come alive and reveal your purpose and step into your leadership so you can serve. Do you understand? Okay. Now, so you're real. Also, what purpose allows you there, the P-U-R, P, again, productive, but not just productive here. Purpose in this letter P is pronounce. Everybody say pronounce. pronounce. Why? Because pronounce, it's like being able to say something, and whenever it's said, it is exactly what it is. So when I say the name Shamron, everyone knows what I'm calling Shamron for because it's so pronounced. It's not Kuma, it's not Pia, it's not, it's not success, it's Shamron. Why? So when someone calls your name, what are they calling you for? So pronounce means that it is an indication that people have, have, have identified who you are based on what you do. So whatever you do, Whatever you do reveals, reflects the purpose, the real, the unique, the productivity of who you are. It's pronounced. Nobody's calling you a donkey. Nobody's calling you a fool. Nobody's calling you a, a liar. They're calling you success leader they're calling you and when they call your name they already think about who you are when they call your name when we want to solve a problem we must call 360 leadership we want to solve problems we must call the engineer <laughs> it's because of who you are you're pronounced you're clear it's like many of you have unique names, especially Nigerians. I love it. But when you say the name, you must be very clear. You know, there might be many Peters, but, you know, there's another, there's a Peter with another aspect to the name. And it's like, wait a second, this guy is so unique. 
I love it. And so pronouncing who you are is not just saying it, but it is living it. Pronouncing who you are is living the declaration, the divine prophetic word that's over your life. What's over my life? What's over my life is that I am called to nations. I am called to inspire you to inspire the world. Let's encapsulate the reason why Shamron Monroe was born. That's it. And so I found it not strange when I got the call to speak to the group of people here at 360 Leadership. I didn't find it strange because that is the pronounce of my purpose. P-U-R-P-O. O is original. Now, I'm not just going to say the word original, but in the mathematical equation, whenever the word O is used or zero is used, original it is called ground zero or the, 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 the point of origin. The point of origin. So the point of origin, original, is what distinguish you from everybody else. What distinguishes Shamron Monroe and you from everybody else? I am from the Bahamas on an island called Great Exuma, and I am traveling throughout the entire world, but specifically to the nation and the beloved people of Africa. Did I, did I ask for this? I didn't. It's a part of my purpose. And I love it. I love it, by the way. You should love it too. You should love your purpose. And, and so your purpose makes you so original and your originality is what's going to cause you to circle the world, circle the arenas. See the O there? Circle the places of influence. Come on now. So if you write your name down and, and you know exactly what you're called to do, you can automatically begin to write out some of the things that you will do even now and in the future. You will know exactly where you'll be going. You'll be going to governments. You'll be going to, to nations. You'll be, sit, you'll be sitting with kings. You'll be talking, consulting with leaders. You'll be emerging, uh, speaking to emerging leaders and, 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 and millennials. And you will help entrepreneurs and, and, and find cures. And some of you are going to educate people. You're going to open up schools. And you're going to keep on. You're going to find yourself in a circle of arenas that makes you original. Original. And it's going to be a place where people will be able to pinpoint you. A point of origin. A point of origin. A place where they can find you. So your purpose is not only what you have discovered, but your purpose is also what others have discovered who you are. If you don't know your purpose, nobody will find you. Nobody will know who you are either. But when you discover your purpose and you know the reason why you're here, others will find you. Come on. Did you guys find me? Was it hard yes. to find me? <laughs> you found me. And, and here I am, and I'm finding you. I'm finding you. And many of you, you have so unique gifts and personalities. We've got to find you. We've got to find the gold in you. We've got to find the original in you. We've got to find the uniqueness of who you are. We've got to find the pronunciation, the pronouncements of who you are. We've got to find the productivity of who you are because we want to know the reason you exist. You exist for a community. You exist for a people. And the people you exist for might not be the people from where you're from. Hello? Right. From where you are and what you're called to do, you might not be called to the people from where you're from. 
You might be from Nigeria. You might be from Kenya. You might be from Zimbabwe. You might be from Ghana, but you're not called to those people. You might be called to China. You might be called to India. You might be called to the Bahamas. You might be called to the Americas. You might be called to South America or the Caribbean islands. There's something unique inside you that may be called to a generation that is not necessarily in your homeland or in your home state. You might be called to South Africa or East Africa or West Africa. You might be called to Europe, to the UK. You might be called to a place that is not necessarily from where you were born. Am I talking to somebody? So I want you to understand that purpose is unique. It's pronounced. It's original. Now, not only original, let's go to the next word in purpose. Purpose is S. It's sure. S is sure. Are you sure you can hear me, everybody? Because once you can hear me, then I know you're here. And once you are here, then I'm alive. Purpose makes you sure and reassures others that you are who you are. Let me say that again. Purpose is so sure, it reassures others that you are who you are. That's why they come to you. They're knocking at your door and they say, I need some answers. I need some solution. And Pia, you are the one who have the answer. And you're like, no, no, you're coming to me. I don't know what you're coming to me for. I cannot help you. And like, no, you have the answer. And you know what you realize? Oh my gosh. I do have the answer. I just never looked inside me. You must understand that purpose is not around you. Purpose is inside you. You know, that's why my quote is, inspiration is yours. It's inside you. I got that at the age of 17. I wrote that down. Inspiration is yours. It's inside you. The word inspiration is the word breath. The breath is yours. It's inside you. The leadership is yours. The leader is in you. And so you must understand the spirit of leadership. The spirit of leadership is the essence of the reason you were created. The breath, the power of your pronounced satiation. I am here. Here I am, world. And once you are so pronounced, nobody can deny you. Nobody can deny your existence because you have brought the solution. You are sure. Matter of fact, the S there, even though we said sure, let's also put another word there. Let's put the word sure solution. You are the sure solution. That's why you took up the degree you took. As a matter of fact, your degree is dictated by your purpose. You didn't get your degree and then discover your purpose. You discover your purpose and then you get your degree. Because the first degree you get is the degree of identity. The first degree is the degree of your identity. Because once you know who you are and you know whose you are, you can do great exploits. And the Bible says, and they knew their God and they did great exploits exploits when you know your god you know who you are who's your god is it buddha is it hela selassie is it is it is it is it is it my high faith well, who where's your god from if your god is out of this world then you my friend my brothers my sisters you are a dynamic leader who is out of this world that's why you are in the world but not of the world. That's why you're outstanding. People say, oh, you are a virgin. It doesn't matter. I'm outstanding. I raise the standard. I am the standard maker. I'm original. I'm about to preach myself. You are the standard maker. 
You're the rainmaker. Wherever you go, people will understand why is it raining? Because the solution has showed up. The solution is me. I am the solution. And in science, solutions are always somewhat like a liquid, eh? It's like a liquid, it flows. I am the solution. I am the solution. I am the yeast in the dough. I am the salt of the earth. I, I am the light of the world. I hope you understand there's a difference. Why? You're not saying you're the light of the world because you're religious. You're saying you're the light of the world because you understand your identity. You are the light in the arena of engineering. You are the light in the medical field. You are the light in the legal profession, in, in, in the law, in the world of law. You are the light in education. You are the light in social studies. You are the light in politics. You are the light in the world because you are the light that is not from this world. You are from another place. You are outstanding. Because you know your God who is out of this world. You're sure. Solution. The last one is E. E is empowering. Explosive. You are an empowering explosion. So when you walk around, the next tomorrow when you wake up in the morning, you are walking, ticking bomb. I'm not saying, you know, you're not going to blow yourself up to go somewhere. You're going to blow yourself up to be somewhere. People are going to see how big you are. They're going to recognize that you are like a David. You can conquer the David, conquerors, the lie, the, 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 the giants. You are so big because you recognize who you are. Oh my God, you recognize how big your God is. So you are so explosive. You are able to speak to giant situations and you say, woo, this uncircumcised Philistine of a situation. And you speak to that situation and you say, I'm going to solve you. I'm going to cut off your head. I'm going to I'm going to heal the nations. I'm going to produce some stuff that's going to heal the people in Africa. I'm going to heal the people in India. I'm going to heal the people in China. I'm going to heal the people in the Bahamas. I'm going to heal the people in the United States. I have the solution. I'm explosive. I'm going to blow up. I'm going to blow up and I'm going to make a world of difference. Now, let's bring it down to the place where you can understand. Whenever a bomb goes off, it changes the environment. So when you know your purpose, you are so explosive and empowering you change the world, you change the environment, you change the people where you are, and they say, I am so different for being in the presence of Mr. Smart. Mr. Smart is so smart, man, he makes me think smarter. <laughs> you should be smart for being around Mr. Smart. With that kind of name, you shouldn't be dumb. With that kind of name, you shouldn't be ignorant. With that kind of name, you should be an explosive smart guy. And there he is, the smart guy. <sighs> hey, you got the name smart here, and, and other people got the name success. So put smart and success yeah. together. Mar Marvin, you're smart. You are smart, Marvin, because you found <laughs> smart and you got success and all that stuff <laughs> on your team. Man, you are a smart guy. <laughs> Give it up for your leader, guys. Give it up for your leader. Give it up for your leader. Give it up for your leader. A leader who understands identity of other people, who appreciate the purpose of other people. He's got engineers on his team. He's got some amazing people in this house today. So you are explosive. And how do you know you are explosive? Because what you do changes the environment. I'm not saying you're, you're loud. Now, explosives are loud, are very, very loud. But you're not loud by your words. You are loud by your actions. Because something that we always say, word, actions speaks louder than words. That's what we always say here in the Bahamas. I don't know what they say with you over there, but actions speak louder than words. 
You know, guys, if, some, if any of you guys are married, I'm married, and I have a wife. It's been 13 years. And if you tell your wife something, your significant other, and you say, hey, I'm going to bring home something for you, she's expecting you to bring home something, come on, I say, hand down, this is a free one. You guys have to make sure, you better make sure you bring the surprise, because she's waiting. She is waiting. Valentine's coming up. She is waiting. She wants that gift. She wants that seek. Look at Mr. Smart. You got to be smart here. You got to be very smart here. Bring the gift. And she's going to be like, oh, man, I feel so good. You know, yeah, it's, going, it's exciting. It's exciting. You, you change it. Actions speaks louder than words. Hey, eh? come on now. That's success right there. That is the best success right there. So leadership, we're going to get to leadership soon. But finish purpose first. So write the word do down, D-O, D-O. I, I just want to give this to you because all of these stuff is coming to my mind. But do, I've taught this before, but do simply means the discipline, the discipline, discipline, And the O is the original. So if you want to, if you want to be somebody who's a disciplined person, who's a doer, you must do something. You must be disciplined. And when you when you are disciplined, you stand out as an original. You stand out as an original because you're disciplined. What are you disciplined? You are disciplined doing what you're called to do. The reason why we know the difference between a lion, when I went to Kenya and I went, they took me to the safari. The reason why you know the difference between the lion and you know the difference between the elephant or the rhinoceros, the rhinoceros is because of what they do. Or the baboons. You don't see a baboon walking around and saying, Rawr. No, I, I've never, I mean, I, when I went to Kenya, I didn't see the baboon do that. No. When you see the zebra, the zebra is not walking around or swinging on the tree like a baboon. You don't see the zebra standing up. Ooh, ooh, ah, ah. No, 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 you don't. <laughs> if the animal kingdom knows what they are called to do, then in the kingdom, where we are explosive individuals out of this world, originators from the creator who is original, then we should do things that are in accordance of being disciplined, that reflects the original. Let me say that again. Uh oh. I want, it, look in the mirror. When you say hi, the mirror says hi. But when the mirror says hi, the mirror does it at the same time. Everybody wait. Wait for me. Wait for me. Let's do it at the same time. Okay. Follow me. Follow me. Now, in the Bahamas, we say follow the leader, leader, follow the leader. Okay. Everybody, follow me. Yeah. Yeah. Let's go. One. Come on. Two, let's go. Two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Woo! Let's go, yeah! Yes, 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 yes. Now, we were doing it, right? Now, because you are from the originator, when the originator does something, you do it. And you do it the same time. In order for you to do it the same time, it means you know who you are. You are a reflector of the origin. The origin, origin is here. The reflecting is here. When the origin does this, the reflection does that. And the origin does this, that, this, that, at the same time. People are looking at you, and you are a reflection of the originator. Woo! 
You've got to be successful. You've got to be smart. You've got to be the leader. You've got to be the head and not the tail. You've got to be above and not beneath. You've got to be a visionary. You've got to know your purpose. Everything we spelled out here, that's purpose. If you follow that, you would, you would know. I've got to be productive. Come on, come on, let's say it, let's say it. I've got to be productive. Come on, let's say the words. What are they? Productive. What else? What's the next one? Come on, somebody, let's help. Come on, let's go. Unique. Unique. Come on, go on. Keep on going. We got to be unique. Let's go. Next one. So Keep on going. Real. Come on, got to be real. Authentic. Authentic. Pronounced. Exactly. Come on, next. Original. Original. Come on, next one. Sure. Come on, sure. That's the music. Come on, let's put the beat together. Solution. 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 Come on, last one. Last one. Empower. Explosive. Explosive. And empower. Explosive. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. That's it there. That's purpose. That's purpose, guys. If your purpose doesn't cause people to be explosive and empowering them for the better, to make them better, so that they can inspire you to inspire the world, so they can inspire their generation. You haven't reached it yet. And that's why, and with reaching it, reaching purpose is through discovering your originator. Your originator is your creator. So purpose is not your mother or your father, even though they can express and they can reveal some hints of your purpose and your destiny. Your purpose creator is the originator of who you are. Your, you are a reflection of the original. Can I prove it to you? Let's go to... Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. <laughs> you can read it for me, Brother Marvin. You can read it for me. Yeah? Well, let, let's say it together. And God said, let us make man in our what? And our likeness. And let them have dominion do you see the word do you see the do you, do you see the do in dominion <laughs> okay do you do you let's let's can we spell the word kingdom here for me let's spell the word kingdom k i n g d o <laughs> do you see the do there thank you ladies and gentlemen you are called to dominate and you're called to be a king, a leader. That's king means leadership. But you've got to be disciplined. Yes. Thank you so much, Peter. The rock of all. Thank you. Thank you. I love it. This. Do. The do, do, do. So you've got to do, 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 do. 360, do. 360, do. 360, do. This is the year of the do for the 360 crew. 360 do. You must do, do, do. And, and if you do it, you will be kings. You will be queens. You will be leaders. Automatically. Because you are a reflection of the, cre of the creator. You, you're a reflection of the originator. Okay, so we're done with purpose. Woo! I worked up a sweat. You know, this, this, this is, ah, man. Next one is leadership. Everybody, leadership. Now, once you understand purpose, leadership becomes very easy now because leadership now is, 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 is lending to the fact that you know your purpose. You can easily become a leader. Why? Because you know you, who you are. You know you're unique. You're productive. 
you're real, you're pronounced, you're original, you know all that, you're sure a solution, you're explosive, empowering. So your leadership now comes out of your purpose. So let's look at the word leadership. Leadership is the word lead, lead and ship, two words put together. You've heard this probably before, and if you didn't, I'm sure you haven't heard it in the unique way that I'm about to say it. You cannot join the ship of the crew, the 360 crew, if you first, it's not a leader. <laughs> because lead is before ship. So the ship that you're on is determined by the leader that you are. <laughs> If you are on a, 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 a follow ship, follow, follow ship, follow, then you will be following all, you, the, you'll be a part of the crew of followers. The crew of followers, eh? If you are on a leadership, then you are on the crew of leaders. I would prefer to be around a crew of leaders than a crew of followers. Because a crew of followers, everybody's gonna ask, who's the leader? Who's the leader? Where are we going? 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 Kuma, where are we going? Where are we going? Well, he says, I know where we're going. We're going over here. He's the leader. And then you say, ah, oh, I know where we're going. That's why you are all together. Because you're using your uniqueness, your unique gifts, and you're pulling it together on the ship, and you're standing out as leaders, among leaders. You are leaders among leaders. You are leaders in the midst of leaders. You are leadership. Oh, the lesson is over. That is no more leadership talk on that one. Because it is. Because leadership is you knowing who you are. Okay, I'm going to go more deeper. I won't just leave it hanging because Goma's like, what? It's over? It's done? No. So leadership, when you think about leadership, I like to use the word E-D, L-E-A-D, A-D, sorry, A-D, L-E-A-D. So highlight the letters A and D in the word lead. I hope you know where I'm going. Okay, let me ask Smart the question. Smart, do you know where I'm going with this? Uh, not yet, but I have a feeling that it's something nice, right? <laughs> <laughs> okay, somebody else. Someone else who I've been talking, because I'm looking at one screen. Uh, Sarah, uh, Sarah, where am I going with this? Do you, do you think you have an idea where I'm going with this? I'm um, sorry, I excuse myself. I entered with my sister's name, but my name is Ruth. Sorry for the oh. confusion. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, well, after understanding LED, which means to lead, which means um, you are going to be in front of other people. There are some people that are going to follow you. I would say as smart, like uh, is going somewhere nice and encouraging. They <laughs> going somewhere nice and encouraging. Okay, very good, very good. Peter, I, I, I think, I think if, I, if I can say something shortly, um, I think um, what, what I draw out is the fact that um, when you say leader and you say ship, it means, um, first of all, there is, um, there is first um, a, desire for understanding your purpose as a leader first you have to first know that you are a leader before you decide to attach yourself to a ship of leaders so if you don't understand the leader you are and the type of leader you are then you can't necessarily find the right ship that you can attach yourself to which will now help you have the best expression of your leadership very good very good very good very good very good now I am, I'm, I'm highlighting the letters A and D, A and D. And since I was trying to get that out, A and D is important because A and D says add. <sighs> A 
the Bible says, be wise as a serpent, but harmless as a dove. The word serpent is the Hebrew word or the Greek word there for the word adder. Mm. <laughs> so if I'm going to be a leader, I must be a leader. I must be a leader. I must be a wise individual. Why am I connecting myself to this ship? It comes with wisdom. Because if you show me your friends, I will see your future. Because birds with the same feather always flock together. Mm. Mm. So Lee Adder in leadership, Lee the Adder is the Adder. What are you adding to my life? Are you wise? And the Bible also says, and Jesus, Yeshua, he grew in wisdom, knowledge, and understanding in the spirit. Huh? See, you mustn't quote scriptures just to quote scriptures. You must quote the text so you can understand how to release, how you can be perfected and be the leader. So why is an adder, a leader, a leader, but harmless as a dove? So leadership means that you are the head, but you are not a manipulator. You are the head and not the tail, not because you are proud, or you think you're better than everybody else, you are the head because you are wise enough to give people the better part of your life. You are wise enough to bring about better people around you. You allow the best of the best to be around you. You say, I want Ruth, I want Peer. I want smart. Give me success. I want those kind of people around me. You are wise enough to know that. And you're wise enough as a young man or a young woman, you are wise enough to choose the right spouse. Leadership, L, you are loving. You are a lover to love. You love people. You are loving. A leader loves people. Find me a person who hates people, they're not a leader. They are, they are a dictator. Dictators hate people. Leaders love people. When you love people, you can inspire them. When you love people, you can empower them. When you love people, you can improve them. When you love people, you can promote them. When you love people, you will surround yourself with them and allow them to be on your ship. leadership e you are an encourager you know how to encourage people and you are an encourager because you have courage the only people that can encourage you are people who are courageous and a lion is a courageous individual a lion is courageous. In the midst, I'll tell you the story, guys. When I was in, when I was in, when I was in Nigeria, uh, my host, 
Uh, Mr. Otono, Otono, Hillary Otono was my host. And he took me to meet his mother. And she was telling me the story. And she said, this was she told her son when, she, when he was a little boy. He said, Otono, if you want to be like the goats, you will always eat grass. That's funny, right? Because <laughs> goats eat grass. I was like, where are you going with this? It's natural. Goats will eat grass. It's natural. So she said, if you want to be with the goats, you will always eat grass. <laughs> She says, but if you want to eat meat, you want to eat meat, the Bible says, give them meat, not milk. Milk is for the babes. Meats are for the mature ones, the leaders. Give them meat. If you want to eat meat, lioness says, you must hang with the lions. I was like, oh man, I got this message. If you, if you are eating grass, it means you are around goats. But the minute you taste the blood, you taste the meat, you taste power, you taste leadership, you are hanging, you are not just walking, you're running. You are running with the lions. And if anybody knows about lions or lioness, they always run when they are hunting in order to get their meat. You're running. Why are you running? Because you gotta chase after the goals. You gotta run after the success. You gotta run after your purpose. You gotta chase the desires of the heart of God. You gotta run after the heart of God. You gotta run after the desires to be faithful, to be committed, to have the fruit of the spirit. You gotta run and chase after fruitfulness and meekness and gentleness and leadership. You gotta run, you gotta run, you run. The Bible says in the book of Timothy, it says run unto those who chase after righteousness. It says, run unto those. It says, flee youthful lusts, but run unto those who chase after righteousness. You have to chase after righteousness. You don't walk after righteousness. You must chase after righteousness. Young men, you must chase after the wife of your youth. You must find the diamond, find the rubies, chase after it, discover it, journey after it. You're digging and moving the rocks out of the way because you want to find the pearl. A precious price. The kingdom must chase after it. It's all entwined. It's all entwined, guys. It's all interrelated. So if you're not chasing, you're not a leader. Because a leader is like a lion. A lioness. They don't walk. Do, 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 do. I think I'll eat an apple today. I think I'll eat some grass. Um, no. He's hunting. He's sneaking. He's like an adder in the grass, wise as a serpent. And he launches out and gets the meat. Achieves the goal. Achieves the goal. You know, it's very smart that a lion does not he doesn't walk around pretending that he's not a lion. He knows he is. So the first thing about being smart is about knowing who you are. Because when you know who you are, you can do great exploits. When you know who you are, and knowing who you are is knowing who your creator is. Leadership. Leaders love. They encourage. The next thing they do is that leaders, I'm going to put the two letters together, A-D, they add. A-L-E-A-D. They add. A-D. They add to you. The founder of 360 Leadership Network is adding to you today by inviting me on this platform to speak to you. 
Are you not? If you're being empowered right now and in charge right now, then you have just met somebody who is an adder, a lee adder, a wise individual. And if you keep companies with wise people, you too shall be wise. Ain't that the scripture? Right in the book of Proverbs. Leadership. What's leadership? Leadership is loving people. It's learning to love people, empowering and encouraging people, and being an addition, being a plus, a plus one. So even like relationships, a husband and a wife, they should be a plus one. You come into my life, you should add to me. I do not need no subtraction. All the ladies wave at me. You tell them, I don't need no subtraction. I don't need no subtraction. <laughs> I don't need no subtraction. I already, I had a, I already was brought up a certain way. I lived a certain way. I don't need no subtraction. I need addition. I don't need subtraction. I need an addition. <laughs> I need an addition. All right. That's leadership. That's leadership. That's the power of leadership right there. I could talk a lot more about leadership, but I don't want to go deep more into it. I, we, have, we, have, we, have, we have just got into the, the premises of it. Once you understand those premises that we just talked about, then you understand a lot about leadership. Yes, one plus one is us. And us, if you look at the word us, you will also find the word trust. Because trust is, there is us. Us is in the word trust. There you go. I know some of you are thinking, you're like, man, this is good stuff. And Jesus, there's us in Jesus too. <laughs> so you and I, we must be in Jesus. He say, I in you and you in me. And together we make a powerful team. Hallelujah. Can the, now I'm going to shout. Can the church say amen? Hallelujah. Praise God. <laughs> amen. 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 I haven't opened the Bible yet, but I feel like I'm about to open the scripture text, but I love it. I love it. I love it. Amen. Because they're us. One plus one equals us. Yes. And, and I want to say this one. This is a free one too, guys. Look at this. You, the letter U plus the letter N, I, T-Y, is unity. You and I, T-Y. You and I, I, you and I tie together, not together, is unity. Ah, oh, P, I see you. I see you looking on the face. I see you. You get the revelation right there. So you must be around people who unite you together, who unify you together, who bring us together, who speak about we and not I, who speak about us because there's trust, who speak about us because it's about Jesus. Leadership. You and I, T-Y. There you go. Thank you, Peter. That's leadership. Now, let's go to service or serve. <laughs> serve feels like an urge. Like I have the urge to serve. Yeah. Once you know your purpose and you understand your unique leadership potential, you will have the urge to serve. So service comes out of your leadership and leadership is a result of your purpose, your discovery, discovering who you are. So when you discover your purpose, you know your leadership, you will automatically serve. So here's a key. This is a major key here, guys. Service 
is automatic when you know your leadership. So if you find people who do not like to serve, but they want leadership, they want to be in position, I want you to quickly understand they do not know their purpose. Because positions can only be given when you know who you are. And my matter of fact, positions are not really given. Positions are more so opened up to you because you know who you are. Why? Because the text says, it says a man's, a man's gift make room for him. So nobody said, I want you to be the leader. Your gift made room for you and says, hey, back aside, everybody. I'm here to serve. Back aside, everybody. I'm here to serve. I'm here to serve because I know who I am as a leader. I know who I'm as a leader because I know my purpose. That's it right there. So service is a pre, is, is, is service is, is a result or it is a natural end result of you knowing your leadership. So put it this way, purpose plus leadership or purpose discovery plus leadership potential equals service. You will automatically serve as a leader. So leaders who do not serve are not leaders. They are dictators in positions of titles. Because leadership is not a title. Leadership is everything I just finished teaching you guys. Everything I just finished teaching you guys is what leadership is. It's loving people, empowering people, adding to people, being wise enough to know who people are and bringing a team together as leadership. If you are able to do that, you will solve all the problems in any organization you go in. You will solve any problem. If you want to eat grass, hang with goats. You want to be mature, run with the lions. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Ah, wow, wow. My God, wow. This, this is a powerful, mind-blowing session. Please, please. I don't know who has recovered from this, but it is going to take a long time, even a lifetime, as long as it can take a lifetime for me to recover from this. I, I, I have my notes. You can see my, my notes, my notes, my notes is covered. And uh, I've, I've just been taking notes and I am really, really blessed. In fact, this is, this is more, more, I can say it's more than what I expected. More, much more. Thank you. Than, yeah, Thank you. Than what I expected. Thank you. Just someone said it's, it's a masterclass. Who is the iPhone, please? We need to know who the iPhone is. <laughs> who, who is iPhone? iPhone, who are you? <laughs> iPhone, please <laughs> show yourself. So, so this, this is wonderful. Can we just put our hands together for him? Wherever you are, just, just put our hands together, put our hands together, clap, just, okay. just appreciate, appreciate him. Thank you so much, sir, for, for spending your time to be with us. We know you're a minister, you're very busy, you have a lot of engagements, especially on a Sunday morning like this. I think this, this is Sunday afternoon in the Bahamas, but yet you, you just spent your time to be here with us. We are very grateful. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We, 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 we have you in this family now. And, <laughs> yes. and please, 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 everybody connect with him on social media. Just connect with yes. him on Facebook. Find me on Facebook, yes. You can get him on Facebook and, and, and you can just, if you have a question, whatever it is, you can always feel free to connect and just share with him. And I'm sure he's going to reply you. Thank you so much for your time. 
We are really Thank grateful. You. And I'm sure we, we have some questions. Maybe yes. one has a question, um, whatever. So um, Smart will be in charge of that session. Over to you, Smart. He's very smart. Wow, yeah. you're so smart to have yeah. smart there. Yeah. Thank okay. you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Pastor Shamra Monroe. Thank you so much. Ah, I, I almost feel like if I didn't go to church today, like with the with, with, with what we've discussed, this is a full sermon, right? Like this is just this is beyond just um, a conversation. This is actually a full sermon, and exactly. there are a lot of sermons that can be preached out of this. So, on behalf of myself and and my fellow tribers, want to thank you very much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You've said a lot. Like I have, I've written down a lot here, right? And and there's just so yes. much. Um, thank you. Before the, before before I open the floor for questions, like when you were talking and you you talked about the animals, I, I I felt something drop in my spirit and I was led to write down, and it says, "All mammals at infancy drink milk." Goats and lions alike. But there is a time for maturity and separation mm. when you mm. must decide whether you will eat grass or meat. So basically, mm. ah. there's a point where... Pastor Komi, stop doing that. Stop doing that. <laughs> okay. So basically, there's a point where everybody, everybody is at the same level. There's a point where you can't really determine the difference between the person who is a leader and the person who is not. And we're basically at that infancy stage, right? First Corinthians 13, I, I think about the 10th verse, it says, when I was a child, I spoke as a child, I taught as yes. a child. Yes. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. So I, I, I think there comes a point where every single person has to determine for themselves who they want to be. If they want to be lions, and eat meat or they want to be goats and eat grass so thank you very much thank you so much for the exposition critically hitting purpose leadership kingdom where are they <laughs> unity service oh my god like <laughs> just so much thank you awesome i have You're a welcome. full long note like thank you. <laughs> thank you so much it's my pleasure Thank so you I so am. much. Welcome. I, I think I think one of the first, I think one of the questions I have, um, you talked about discipline, and I think discipline is um, one of the biggest challenges that leaders have. And yes. I think um, a lot of a lot of I think it's take, it's taken for granted a lot, and because of that, a lot of leaders miss their way and actually make mistakes in the course of their journey. And yes. I remember you said um, when you are disciplined, you are an original. And you said being disciplined is doing what you are called to do. Now, how do you maintain discipline in the midst of um, challenges and tribulations, as it were? How do you still find way to maintain discipline? For instance, in a country like Nigeria, where we have issues that we have, how do you still find a way to still keep true to your values, how do you stand by certain standards when you know that the system is built in such a way to fight against you? So how do you do that? Why? Um, and, and, I, and, I've, and I've traveled a lot to understand the dynamics of your country, Nigeria, and of course, a lot of things that are similar even here in the Bahamas. Uh, corruption is a result of an individual who lacks discipline. That's, that's pure. So... The, the, what, what causes you or what, uh, uh, as an individual, if you, are, if you already taste the grace, the discipline of your creator, you taste the grace of God, the creator, the desire to stay consistent is simply understanding that if this taste is good and that taste is bad, then why should I choose bad over good? Then it's either that I change my taste buds or I change my discipline. And since I cannot change my taste buds, 
it means I've changed my discipline. So in order for me to stay consistent, to taste the thing that's good, it means I must become, I must chase after discipline. And so realistically, discipline is something that you chase after. It is a hunger. It is a desire. It is a consistent desire. And so when you lose your discipline, you, you lose your taste buds, you use your desire, you, you, you lose your way, and you automatically become corrupt. They said bad character corrupts good, bad company, sorry, bad company corrupts good manners. Well, remember we talked about the ship. The ship is the crew. In front of the ship is the word leader. Leader, then ship. So if I want to be around the right people on the ship, I need to be around people who are leaders. So if I choose to people who are foolish, then I will be around foolish ship. <laughs> foolish ship. But foolish ship are people who are fools. <laughs> and therefore we're going nowhere. And so you must understand it is truly a desire, it is a hunger that you must consistently feed. And that's discipline. Discipline would not be discipline if you do not consistently do it. Discipline will not be the word discipline if it not demands you, you to personally chase after it. So in order to consistently stay an individual who's a leader, you must consistently submit yourself to discipline. And discipline is really having an acquired taste for what's good. Having an acquired taste for what's good. If you know it's marriage, then sex, then you must have an acquired taste to go after marriage first before you have sex. Because automatically, sex outside of marriage. Well, that's just the principle. Um, that's the beginning of it. And so these are the things you must consider. If you want to have a mango tree, let's first plant the mango seed. Plant the mango seed, and later on, you will have a mango tree. So, you know, and then, and not just that, you'll have mangoes, lots of mangoes. You know, so that, that is the, the, the that is the concept of a leader. A leader knows there's a seed, then the tree, and then the fruits. So there's no other way. If you change that way, then you are no longer being a leader. You are becoming a follower or a fool, follow, foolish individual. Wow. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. And, and it's, it's interesting you mentioned the mango tree because I actually wrote that down at the beginning point uh, when we were talking about identity, right? And, uh, I think I think one of the things about identity your, is the fact that your voice um, is down, smart. Am I, um, yes, we can. Am hear I being you. heard now? Yes, better. Okay, yeah. So I said I said I think one of the things about identity is that uh, we can have a debate about a tree right? We can have a debate on whether it's a mango tree or an apple tree, but the best way to settle that debate will be to get the fruits from the tree. And from the fruit on the tree, we can actually determine and put all arguments to bed as to whether yes. that's an apple tree or a mango tree. And that basically talks about identity, right? Like identifying who you are, because I, I, I heard you mention that before you can understand your purpose, you must, first of all, identify who you are. Now, my second question, which is my last question, before I'll let the rest of my brothers and sisters speak, is what do you do when you've had an identity crisis for a long time? Wow. Well, that is an interesting question because I'm... <laughs> I've discovered who I am for a long time. See, you, identity crisis is a challenge of the individual finding out their originality or their origin. And like you said, 
your origin of who you are is based on the seed or the root. So to get to the root of the situation, when you get to the root, you will find the seed. Do you know when you dig up the plant, you will see the, 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 the seed that you planted is still there? Because the, out of the tree came the seed and the roots came out of that very seed. So I'm eating from this mango. I'm eating this juicy, juicy leadership. I'm eating this empowering seminar. I'm eating this uh, I, uh, 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 becoming a great woman. I'm, I'm, I'm eating this, the fruit of principles of leadership and how to be a man and how to be a woman. I'm eating that. Well, I look at the tree and then I look and I look at the roots. I see where it's planted. But when I figure out where it's planted and I see the tree and I'm eating the fruit, guess what? The beauty is when I finish eating a real fruit, I will get a real seed. And the seed is the gift that I too can take the seed and plant a tree and discover a whole new world of myself. So the seed of leadership of purpose is now planted in you. And you too can grow into a tree of life and you can bear fruits and the fruits you will bear will be the very same fruit you ate from before. Wow. That's how identity crisis is. So, yeah. Wow. Oh, mind blowing. I, I've never heard it that way before. Mind blowing. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pastor Samuel. Um, so, Thank you. Um, Tara, for me, Vincent, I don't know if you all have, if any of you have a question. Success, Eliel, Emmanuel, Ruth, Oriva, Barango, every single person. I don't know if you have a question. I think this would be the right time to ask. Yes. Yeah, the that to Emmanuel, I, I, I hear your mic is on. Someone you speaking question? up? I think that's Emmanuel. See me. Emmanuel, okay. Okay, I think Peter has a question. All right. All right, we can hear your question, Peter. All right, thank you um, so much, um, Mr. Shamaran. It was really an amazing um, talk. You know, I had I have like um, a lot of notes here about almost um, about two pages plus. You know, just jotting <laughs> down. So, yeah. So, what I want to ask, right, is um, has to come from the standpoint of just you know just getting this in clarity about you know uh, what we call purpose sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, how do we differentiate um, who we are, right? From like, there's this very strong, yeah. Um, um, what we do is closely tied to uh, who we are, right? But I understand that there are some persons, it's like um, the um, parable of the talent, right? One will have, some have five, some have four, some have one. Right. So um, there are some persons who come to the world with just one. And they are able to discover it early and they're able to go in that single path. And so for them, it's a part of so much clarity. But there are also some persons who are some sort of, um, should I say, multi-talented like yourself, who, you know, you are a painter, you've, 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 um, um, you've been an artist before, you know, um, painting, you've been a songwriter, you are a teacher, you are a speaker. So some of these persons have like a multi um, gift, you know, they find okay. themselves being good at a lot of things. They are in um, academics. They are doing extremely well. In fact, they're on the path to becoming a professor. They can teach well in the church circle. They are good speakers. They are good writer. So for some of these persons, it's really not about um, not really knowing their gift or strength at that point. It's about really becoming clear on, um, like you have so much and at the end of the day, it's more like a disadvantage. So how can this kind of person um, begin to find clarity in um, a multitude of gifts? Yeah, that kind of thing. 
Thank you. Awesome. Uh, it's a good question. A good question. And I think sometimes it is it is answered. It, it has been answered already, but it's a good question because you're, you're trying to give a bird's eye view on it. Well, simply as we said about purpose, remember now, when you do like the tree, when the plant the mango seed, watch this, when you plant the mango seed and it becomes a mango tree and it bears mango fruits, do you have to plant it again? Do you have to plant the tree again? No, no, no. Exactly. What now happens is the tree now has to go through the cycle of continually producing the same thing. So the thing is, you have to keep on producing year after year, month after month, day after day, week after week, the same thing. Why? Because you have so much people that will interact with you. They will not know whether you are a mango tree today. They might discover you are a mango tree tomorrow or two years from now. Because by the time you are producing the fruit that they have to see, the light of the world, the salt of the earth, it might be through different stages and different challenging times of your life. And at those times when you produce who you are in the midst of those crises, they will say, oh, you are the mango tree. Oh, you are the mango tree. So when you express yourself at different times of life, it is at those different times that people will discover who you are. Remember I said purpose is two things. It's first you discovering who you are. But after you know who you are, it's now people discovering who you are. Now, this message is the first time you have heard me say this. But what I'm saying today is not the first time I've said this. It's like the mango tree. I am producing it now for you. You do it consistently, time after time. You undergo the principle. You are already planted. You, know, you do not no longer have to be planted again. You now have to continually get the nutrients, grab the nutrients from the soil. That means undergo teaching, training, development, being pastored, mentored by a mother, by a father, by a leader, whether in economics, in education, those, you're taking everything from the ground. That's what you're getting from the roots. So you can produce in the season a unique mango fruit. You've got plenty of them. Got tons of mango fruit. Some 100, some 60, some 50, some 40. There you go. Wow. Wow. Amazing. Wow. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for that. Thank you. And I don't know if anyone has any other question again. I think success. I think, I think every, single, every single question just brings out new revelations and new insights telling you. into the conversation, really. Okay. Yeah. I think we have success. Yes. Success, do you have a question? Yeah, I think that will be the last. Yeah, sorry. Um, All right, over to you, success. Yes. Um, thank you so much uh, for uh, this wonderful section of yours and message. Um, Smart was asking a question concerning um, identity crisis. I, I, I wanted to get uh, what you said. Sorry for bringing you back to what you said, but I just wanted to get what you said to write it down and make it happen. Repeat, say, repeat it for me louder, please. I didn't hear it. Can you repeat it? Oh, I think he's asking about um, identity crisis that he didn't get what you said about identity crisis. Oh, uh, the solution. Yeah, the solution. Now, now identity crisis, the, it's a crisis because you don't know your identity, <laughs> okay? 
<laughs> that's what the crisis is. Because yeah. if you had, if you knew your identity, then there is no crisis, <laughs> no crisis. Okay, but the reason why there is an identity crisis is because you're trying to discover who you are. And we said discovering who you are is really not trying to serve first, even though serving helps you to discover it, or not trying to become a leader first, even though become, being a leader will help pull it out of you, but it's first discovering your purpose from your originator. So your identity crisis is really a crisis of relationship with your creator. Mm. If, okay, so let, let me get biblical on you. Your identity crisis is because you're not saved and born again. Because when you are born again, you are born of the spirit. And when you are born, whenever a child is born, they are taken home by their parents. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sure you didn't cry as a baby in the hand of a stranger. I'm sure you didn't suck the breast of a strange woman. You were probably on the breast of your mother. You know, in, 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 in natural circumstances I'm talking about now, not extreme. Extreme is, you know, if someone was adopted or something of like that. But I'm talking about now. Naturally, you will go home with your parents, your father and your mother. And as you grew up and you become one years old and two years old and three years old, you will know who you're looking up at to is your daddy is your mother and you will say papa and his papa say hello hello gucci 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 and you will laugh and giggle because guess what you are now responding to the voice why not only that you are responding to the voice you heard when you were inside your mother's womb I knew you before you were formed in your mother's womb. Why? Because I began to speak your destiny. I began to declare who you are. So when you came out your mother's womb and I say, how you doing? Gucci, Gucci, Gucci. You knew my voice. My sheep knows my voice. And another, they will not Come on, somebody, y'all got to understand why. This is why you know the voice of God. You know the voice of God because you are born by the spirit of God. And God, who is a good father, he stays around the mother. He stays around the incubation of your, of your identity. He stays around when you are born again. He stays around you in the journey of your salvation. He stays around you while you are being developed because he is a good, good father. He's a daddy who provides. He's a daddy who leads you. He's a daddy who guides you. So he speaks to you and you know his voice. And you say, daddy says, come to me, success. And you come running to your daddy. So your identity crisis, an identity crisis is a result of fatherlessness. So whoever is your pastor, whoever is your, deacon, your bishop, your apostle, whoever is your evangelist, they should tell you who your daddy is. And when your daddy speaks to you and you hear the voice of your daddy, no matter how long you've never seen your daddy, You've been nine months in your mother's belly and you've never seen your daddy. But when you hear the voice of your daddy, because your daddy is a good, good father, your daddy has been around your mother. So when you hear the voice of your daddy, even though you've been inside your mother, even though you've been in sin and shaping in iniquity, the father calls you out of darkness into the marvelous light. And you are born again. You hear the voice of your savior who says you are a leader. You are called for greatness. You begin to cry. You know why you're crying? You're crying because you are emotional. You are crying because you are connecting to the prophetic voice. You are connecting to the prophetic voice of your daddy. You are connecting to the voice of truth, the voice of life. 
the voice of purpose, the voice of leadership. You're connecting to somebody who is also a leader. So when you become a leader, you are reflecting a leader. Just like father, like son, like mother and daughter, you are reflecting the DNA of your father. Do not let anybody tell you you don't know who God is. God speaks to the DNA of your creativity. Why? Because the creativity reveals that you are creative. And the creative part of you means you came from a creator. Follow the root words. The root word, remember, there's always the root word of a word. You've been to English school. You've been to classes, and they always give you the root word. Well, Jesus is the root word. Father, Abba is the root word. Wow. Wow. You so much that, in fact, Come on. It's, 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 it's becoming new every day. It's becoming, it's become, if, if we want to continue, I don't think we're going to leave here. <laughs> because the revelation keeps coming and just keeps coming and just keeps coming. Thank you so much. Thank I'm you. sure that um, everybody has gotten something to learn from this session. Thank you, Smart, for anchoring that session. And thank you so much, sir, for your presence and just blessing us with your word. And love everything. you guys. Yeah, I really love you guys. Good. What can we say? Can we please put it in the comment section? Thank you, sir. Let's put it in the chat box. Everybody, just put it in the chat box. Say thank you. Just say say a word. Just say a word. Say a word. Thank you so much, sir. We are really grateful from my heart. I appreciate your time and, and everything you, you, you represent. I am really grateful. Thank you so much, sir. Success is saying thank, thank you. you. I am thank saying you. thank you. I know every thank other person is saying thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Marango. Thank you so much, sir, for everything. We are grateful. And we know that um, everybody, guys, the, the what he expects from us now is to go out there and become productive. Everything we've heard from him today is for us to go out there and put it into real practice. One thing that really caught me was the do, D-O, D-O. I think that's really what I'm taking. I'm, I'm holding that so fast and it's not going to fall, right? Yeah. D-O, I'm taking that from here and I know Every other person got one thing or the other that you received, and uh, mm. and and we're going to take that away from here. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for having me, guys. Yeah, Love you all. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. And this you is not the much. end. This much. is not the end. We we are going to have you some other time. We are going to speak to you again, and we are going to have you in a much fuller house and and yes. also on our, our on our public platforms. And, yes. And, yes. I've got to come to your city, so let's plan that. And yes. also, you've got to send me by my email. Send me the video, please, because I've got to. I'm going to be exactly. posting some things on my social media, so persons can follow and see behind. But please send me the video. I can't yes. wait to just really uh, uh, share with the worldwide web, the worldwide of Facebook, so that other people can be inspired. Exactly. and that they too can recognize their potential and their purpose. It's been a pleasure sharing with you guys with the 360 Leadership Network. And uh, all the way from the Bahamas, I bring you greetings once again. And from my lovely wife, Kimberly, uh, who allows me to give to you all, because without her telling me to go, I cannot go. And of course, the almighty God, the Father, Jehovah, and uh, Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, and the Holy Spirit who allows me to move in this anointing and this gift. I give thanks and honor to my Father, God above all, and all of my mentors who have encouraged me and motivated me and inspired me. I thank God for them being a part of my life, allowing me to be all that I am. It's a blessing to share from this platform, from I'm International in the Bahamas to you all, throughout the world. God bless you all. Thanks for having me once again. Thank you. Have a good Thank one. you, sir. We'll, we'll appreciate a word of prayer from you to us. As okay. You take yeah. Well, I will bless you. Father, I thank you for these inspirational beings. Thank you, God, that they are inspired to be innovators, to be 
People who are creative, who will lead, who will be great, who will speak to their nations, speak to their communities, who will not sit and eat grass, but who will run and eat meat, who will grow into maturity and become great leaders, women and men of integrity and character. Thank you. Thank you that the world had now received the 360 Leadership Network team, they will now receive them from Cyprus, Nigeria, Uganda, and all parts of Africa. The UK will now receive them as they continue to become the agents of change. You've called them to be in name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Love Thank you guys. You. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Wow. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Wow. It was an amazing session. And um, I really want to be thankful and grateful to everybody that have stayed up to this time. Thank you for your time. I know we've taken a lot of time, but I also know we've also learned it, is, it doesn't be um, a waste of time. Thank you for your patience and also just staying through up to this time. God bless you all. And um, I'm going to allow us to rest, but please, 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 everything you've learned, I know you've taken notes, let's please put it into action. Let's implement it in our lives. Just go back later and just have everything and just go back on all that you've learned. And I'm really, really sure that your life is not going to remain the same. Um, for the other teams, of, for the, 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 the team leaders of 360 Leadership Network, we'll be having a meeting um, next week that's next week, right? Then to really know how the year is going to look like. This year, we are not going to do a lot of all those events events this year, but it's just going to be the more internal stuff and just especially focusing on the structure of this organization. That's what we'll be doing this year. And um, God will help us and give us guidance on, on, on how to build that as we prepare for what is ahead of us. So thank you so much, Pera. Thank you, Smart. Thank you, Eliel. Thank you, Emmanuel, Oreva, Peter. Success. Thank you. And for those that have let gone as well, thank you, everybody, for staying true. And I say God bless you all in Jesus' name. Um, can we have um, Pastor Smart just pray for us as we go? I haven't been ordained yet, but... <laughs> You're <a> bishop. <laughs> anyway. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for a wonderful time in your presence. We thank you, O oh God, for your servants who you have used this evening to bless us. We thank you because we know, O oh God, that the words that have been spoken, that those words are life, and those words will speak and minister lives into our individual lives. Father Lord, I pray for your servants who has been a blessing to us this evening. I ask, O oh God, that as Virtue has gone out of him, Lord, you will refill him and keep him on fire for your purpose. And for every single one of us, for every single member of True Sister Leadership, Lord, I ask, O oh God, that you will keep us and protect us. That even as we depart right now to attend to other activities in our various countries and locations, Lord, I pray that we are not departing your presence, but, O oh God, your presence will continually follow us and lead us and guide us and continue to help us to be better people, to be better leaders and to affect our generation positively. We thank you, our Father, because we have a confidence that when we pray, you hear us and you answer. Thank you, mighty God, for we pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. 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 Thank you so much, everybody. Do have a wonderful night rest. Greetings from the United Kingdom. I bring you greetings from the from the king, not the queen. Hey, the king, no. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you, Pera. Good to see you again. Um, yep. to see that you're awake up to this time. Thank oh, you. Good night, everyone. Thank you so much. Who is that? Who is that? That's, 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 that was a river. <laughs> well, I don't know. Oh, trouble. <laughs> Emmanuel is on the call. Hmm, I'm surprised though. Emmanuel. Emmanuel, hmm, good to have you, brother. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Smart. And um, I think 
So people are already sleeping. So let's allow them to sleep. Okay. Okay. Yeah. All right, guys. Bye.